Hello and welcome to the sixth video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own visual novel style game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll be covering some c -sharp programming to add some timing to our scene to create a sequence. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment or drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel, and you'll also find all the scripts and assets that we use in this series there too, along with plenty of other things, and you can also join as a free member. Now, on with the tutorial. So this tutorial is the big one for some people. It's about learning coding, and coding can be very daunting to some people. There's a misconception that it's hard to learn, it takes a long time to learn, but in reality, it's actually very, very simple, as long as you put your mind to it. All you need to do is take it one step at a time, little by little, and you'll be able to master programming in no time at all. So why do we need to do programming in this tutorial? Well, I want to create a sequence where the fade screen occurs, then our character fades in, and then we'll have a section where the character talks in a text box, and we'll add that a little later on in the series. And then next thing you know, the other character slides in from the side. And in order to do that, we need to use a coroutine within a script that allows us to place everything in time. So how do we get all this going? Well, first things first, we need to create a folder. So make sure you're in the assets folder. Right click, create folder, and let's call it scripts. And in this folder, let's create another subfolder. As this is going to be scene one, I like to keep everything together so as there's not too many scripts populating one single folder. So we'll call this scene 01 because this is our first main scene. Obviously we will have other scenes like a main menu and so forth, but that will come a little later on in the series. So next thing, let's create that C sharp script. So right click, create C sharp script, and we can call this anything, but try and make it relevant to what we're doing. So we'll call this scene 01 events and then hit return to open that up in Visual Studio. So Visual Studio is where we code everything. You can use other programs if you want to but I'll be using Visual Studio. So when it loads it will present to you a default couple of lines of code. Now we'll go through some of these so we understand what they mean and why they're here. So the first three lines at the top you can see using system.collections, using collections.generic, using Unity Engine, these are known as the namespace. And you can think of the namespace declaration as kind of a library for the script to know where to look for things. So think of it as a person. A person needs to know something, so it goes to the library to look in a book. That's what the script is doing. The script needs to know something, so it's going to the namespace to look for what it needs. Below that, we have the public class scene01 events mono behavior. Now, it's important to know that the class name must be the same as your script name. So, for example, ours is called scene01 events. If we were to change the class name, the script would not function correctly. What is the class? The class is where most of the coding would take place. It's where you have your methods, coroutines, variables, all that kind of jazz. So anything we mostly write in the script is going to be within this class. What's already in this class, I hear you say? It is two methods, a start method and an update method. What are methods? They are self-contained bits of code that can be executed. So in this case, you can see this annotation right here says that the start method is called basically when the script starts. So if you've got the script activated, you start your scene, Anything within the start method is run right away, straight there, once and only once. Whereas the update method is called constantly, so it will constantly run until the script is turned off, destroyed, just not existent anymore. So how do we make it so as we can control our scene using time? Well, we have to use a coroutine, but we need a method to start the coroutine. So how do we do all of this? All of this sounds crazy and just un it's not possible for a, a new person anyway, but no, it is. So let's start by thinking, how do we do this? Well, 
we need to create a coroutine. So rather than have this void update, let's delete that. And let's put our coroutine beneath our start method. So let's type i enumerator. If I can actually type, my fingers won't type. i enumerator. And capitalization is important. Make sure it's a capital I, capital E. Uh, whenever you're coding, make sure you get your capitals correct. For example, game object with a capital G and a capital O is different from game object with a lowercase g and a capital O. But if you have any problems with this script, go to the pinned comment or go to the uh, description. There'll be a link where you can go and get this script. Uh, let's call this uh, enumerator something relevant. So we'll call it event start, then open close bracket, open curly bracket, and hit return. So already we can see an underscoring of red on event start. In fact, I might change that to event starter just in case. There we go. That makes a little bit more sense. Event starter. Now, the reason this is happening is because there's no specific lines of code within this coroutine for it to execute. So it returns an error. So if we were to save this script now and head back into Unity, we would see an error within our console. There we go. You can see that. So it's not happy with what we've done. And like I said, the reason this error occurs is because there's no further code within that coroutine. So let's go and create a coroutine. Now, there are three things that we need to control, three objects within our scene that we need to control. It's the fade screen, because we'll need to turn that off. Uh, it is the first character, Kasumi, and then it is the second character, Haruka. So we need to make sure that this particular coroutine knows that those three objects are part of this script. So what we can do is now delete that line up there because anything in green with two slashes is a note. It's an annotation. It's not a line of code. It's just there for information. We now need to declare three variables. And like I said, those variables are the fade screen and the two characters. And we can declare the first one by saying public game object, because obviously it's a game object. And then you call it anything you want. Obviously, make it relevant. So we'll say fade screen in. Obviously, we're going to have a fade screen out. So I just want to make a difference here because we might end up with another variable that says fade screen out. So there would be two different objects. And hit semicolon. Most lines like this would end with a semicolon. It's just a way for the script to recognize, oh, that's the end of the line. Let's move on to the next line. So the next one is going to be Kasumi. So public game object. And I'll put char, short for character, Kasumi. And then semicolon. And then we'll put public game object. Not with the double B though. Uh, char Haruka. Semicolon. So there's three variables that we need all declared. So what happens first within our sequence? Well, the fade screen in happens. And I can't remember how long we have that fading in for. Was it two seconds or was it three seconds? Let's quickly go and double check. Uh, if we go to our fade in, go to animation. And it was two seconds. So that means that the first line of code that's going to occur within our coroutine is going to be yield return new wait for seconds and in brackets two with a semicolon. So what's happening here? Well, this coroutine is now saying before we go any further, we need to wait two seconds. So that means after two seconds, the next line of code will occur. And what is the next line of code? Well, it's going to be Kasumi appearing on screen. So we can say char Kasumi dot set active true, semicolon, and hit return. Now, what happens next? Well, at this point, we have to wait for Kasumi to fade in, and then she would effectively talk and then we would have Haruka slide in. So what we'll do for now is we'll put yield 
return new, wait for seconds, and we'll wait for another two seconds. And now what we'll do is we'll put a little annotation here just to say this is where our text um, function will go. So let's put two forward slashes. This is where our text function will go in future tutorial. So next thing, we'll have the text. And after the text has disappeared, we'll wait for a further two seconds. And what I'm going to do is rather than retype it, I'm going to copy that line of code and place it there. After that two seconds, I want Haruka to slide onto the screen. So let's say char Haruka dot set active true with a semicolon. Now, one thing we have forgotten to do is we need to remove our fade in screen. And this is a perfect opportunity to say that we don't need to have only one line of code between waiting for the script. We can have two things occur, three things, four things. We can have as much as we want happen between our wait for seconds line. So what we'll say is fade screen in dot set active false. And if you notice there, it gave me the opportunity to press tab. It automatically knew what I kind of wanted to do. Think of it as it's predicting what we want. Sometimes it's correct, sometimes it isn't. So just keep an eye on it when it kind of is grayed out a little bit and see if that is the correct line of code you want to see. If it is, just hit tab and it will fill it for you. So let's quickly go over what is happening in this section here. Well, it's saying we'll wait for two seconds. Then after two seconds, we'll turn the fade screen off and we'll turn Kasumi on. After two more seconds, we'll do some text stuff. After two more seconds of the text stuff, we'll set Haruka on. So Haruka will slide in from the side. So this is all good and well, but how do we make it so as this actually happens within our scene? Well, it's fairly simple. In our start method up here, we just need one single line of code to say you need to start event starter. So what we say here is start coroutine and in brackets event starter. Open close bracket, close bracket again, semicolon and save the script. So if you've made it this far in the tutorial, congratulations, you've just written your first script. So the next thing to figure out is how do we make this script apply to our scene? Well, let's go back to Unity and let's create an empty game object and we'll call this scene control. So this object will be responsible for controlling pretty much everything that happens within this scene. So it's going to have probably a few scripts attached to it. So speaking of which, let's drag and drop this script onto scene control. And if you look over here, you'll see some objects. These are the three variables that we set earlier, the fade screen and the two characters. Now to set those so the script knows which object is which, we just drag and drop these objects over here. So let's drag and drop fade in on fade screen in. Let's drag and drop Kasumi onto char Kasumi, and then Haruka onto Haruka. And that's it. And if we press play now, we should see our sequence play out as we intended it to. So if we give it a second just to compile itself, and off we go. There we go. And now we should see Haruka slide in. Excellent. So that's that. Scripting really is as easy as that. It's great to see that you know, just a couple of lines of code, and we can do that. We can make things happen. So imagine what happens when we expand that code and we actually have things we interact with on screen and the characters are talking to each other. That's what we're going to do next time. So we're going to add in a text box and we're going to have the ability for Kasumi to actually say something before Haruka slides onto screen. So remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial. And I'll see you next time.